Hello guys, welcome back to the Java tutorials. In the last tutorial we learned about a lot of stuff, so and now it doesn't matter probably. Because this tutorial is about GUI, graphical user interfaces. Now graphical user interfaces is really important to interact with the user. It's the only gateway through which a user can interact. I mean it's not the only gateway, but it is the most appropriate gateway using which user can interact with the system. Now, Java had a really old history about making graphical user interfaces in programmatically. Now, it's not history, I mean, still the uh, GUI is made programmatically, but now that the NetBeans has created this graphical, this GUI um, builder, I mean, I'm just going to say um, GUI from now, because graphical user interface is too long to say. Okay, so. So NetBeans has prepared a gra GUI builder which would allow. I'm just going to set this project as main project as we are doing this. Okay, so as I was, as I was saying, NetBeans has prepared this new graphical user inter GUI builder which would help you to make GUIs and which will help you customize the experience by just dragging and dropping tools on the window. Now this was a very popular concept by Microsoft Visual Studio before, but now it looks like NetBeans has has took some what you call revenge from Microsoft after they um, stolen their they have stolen their C Sharp and it's called them so they have uh, stolen the concept from Java and it's called the C Sharp. Well, now the NetBeans probably calls this payback time or something <laughs> because they they. They took the graphical user interface designer in. I mean, it's not the same, but and I know C Sharp is not an exact copy of Java, but it's more or less copy because Java has got um, J unit, um, C Sharp has got um, C unit. But, uh, let's just leave it now. Okay, so now to make the to to use the GUI builder, you right click on the package tutorials, new J frame form. I have it here. However, if you don't have it here, go to other and uh, java sorry GUI forms and j frame form now j frame means the the actual this this entire window how j panel is this a panel so we'll learn about it later but we need to use the j frame form because we are going to design a entire window not just a part of window so just click next and it's going to tell you what to name your new class so just say a uh, in this tutorial I'm gonna say tutorial 4 but you can call it anything you want and I'm gonna press finish now and it might take time depending on your configuration because in some PCs the GUI builder is not enabled automatically so it gets activated by itself I mean after you after you click the next button it's gonna activate it and it takes time but, but this is pretty alright yeah Okay, now this is your um, window without the X and um, the minimizer restore and uh, minimize thing. But this is pretty much like your uh, blank window. And in this, I can I have the controls here, swing containers. And if you scroll down, it says swing controls and swing menus. And if you expand them, they, are, um, they have all this uh, thingy, menu bar and menu and menu. It, it looks pretty easy at the beginning, but I mean each can each component takes a certain amount of data inside which is uh, segmented into subclasses and stuff like that so well it's easy you'll get your hang on it but you just need to practice and stuff now for this tutorial we're gonna check out some different layouts so if you if you drag something now and like J button, you get these things. I mean, these are really helpful, but if you have very graphical intensive things, I mean, in which you have, uh, in which you have a lot of uh, um, controls over the form, like all of these, and like, and I had a real problem. I mean, it's it's sort of helpful because if you drag this, oh man, come on, if you drag this, and if you if you see it, it it's gonna snap to the uh, button. And it's gonna allow me to uh, adjust the location, and and as you see, it it is staying in just one line. 
um, I'm, though I'm not having my hands steady and it, it just snaps to it and it's pretty good however I would rather prefer to have the freeform absolute layout because I can use my things so, up so the current layout is in bold free design but I can change to absolute layout by selecting absolute layout and now I can place this wherever I want without any constraints so this is what I prefer and another layout is the grid layout which would place everything in a grid now this is not what I'm a big fan of because this is oh shit okay because this is uh, man okay I can just undo probably yeah and well this is not to I sort of think then this flow layout which would arrange everything according to the flow and all the Java thing which is absolutely preposterous according to me cuz yeah and so I think absolutely is the best for me border layout I would arrange everything according to borders and stuff like that but this is the best because because you can virtually place it anywhere and here it would give you I mean if if you hold this it it shows you the uh, location there right there so uh, it is now at uh, 160 60 120 130 180 and stuff like that so it's pretty good and and I and I'm gonna use this throughout the tutorial however you can choose wherever you want because it's it's basically up to you what you want to do now for this one what you're gonna do is I'm gonna delete this to delete it you either right click on it and select delete or you click on it and press the delete button which is more convenient and in for this tutorial we're just gonna do a simple thing I'm just gonna drag a text field uh, here and it's gonna expand it a bit and it's gonna and these are the properties here and if you if you if, you, if I'm just gonna I'm just gonna expand this a bit so you can see more properties but you can select background color and columns and document style and stuff like this half of which I don't know no no actually actually I know just joking edit table the, so I'm not I don't want to use it to edit it I want to use it to edit it I can select the font foreground color horizontal alignment which is the text alignment I believe text what you want to put since it's a text wheel I want it to be empty tooltip text which would occur as you hover your mouse over it so please enter your name and UI and stuff like that this is so you can experiment with these properties later because these properties are always going to be there and there's a lot to cover which is not possible in the tutorial so you can experiment this property yourself binding is is binding stuff I mean it's just like I don't know actually <laughs> events okay events are action performed even means the click event then I mean, I mean I'm just gonna use the action performed one throughout and action performed actually action performed changes with control so action performed in text view might be pressing enter button enter or something else mouse clicked is the one that we are looking for but not now it's going to drag this button down and if you see here action performed here it would mean it's a click of the mouse and you have mouse click as well which is different but um, I believe they are the same and I rather prefer to use action performed because it's more popular key pressed is when the when the button is highlighted and if you press the key okay so for this tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the text from the text field and I'm gonna drag a label here and what we're gonna do is we are gonna put the text that has been typed into the label along with something else so I'm just gonna clear this text for now and uh, oh my god okay it's gonna keep it <laughs> okay the, after events you can change the name of that label 
it here says there's a variable name which is jlabel1 so I'm just gonna maybe because I like to use different names so that I can remember so I'm just gonna change the label name to uh, result label okay greeting label and if you click the button that would display you the code properties for the button so it's j button one i'm just going to change it to greet button because if you click it it's going to greet you so and in the text i'm just going to say greet greet me and the text field i'm just going to change it to name text field and it, so now if you want to associate any event with the greet me button just um, double click on it once and that would open the code and that would say geek greet button action performed oh I was actually gonna say geek can you believe that <laughs> okay so the button greet button action performed so this method would be executed whenever the greet button is pressed so in this case what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take the text from the uh, name text field and we're gonna put it in the greet label so greet label dot text uh, set text and in the bracket you say text field name get text okay so what are oh man what's wrong with you hold on so now you can swap between source and design by clicking on the design. However, you're gonna have you having some trouble. I think I forgot their name again. It's greeting label. Oh my god. Okay, so there's greeting label does that text this one. Now you would probably will be wondering if why this color is green. It's green because this this particular object is an global object so this object can be accessed from any method throughout you don't need to define it because it has been defined globally that's why this is global and that's why this is green so global green remember that global is green and that means uh, so now here what we are doing is we're accessing the set text method of the greeting label object and in the parameters it's asking for a string parameter and if you are passing the string returned by the get text method of name text field object so this is this might be a bit difficult for you to understand but once you learn object orientation you'll get hang of this because this is all about object orientation and because because uh, name text field and greeting label are object here in this case so it is it's all about object orientation and stuff However, if you're on object orientation, you should probably look up my tutorial on object orientation as well, which I'm going to post in a few days. And I think yes, it sh um, should have been posted to now. If it's not, uh, it's probably going to be posted in a day or so. So greeting label dot set text this is greeting. So basically, uh, that's it. That's how you set the text of greeting label. If you want to put something generic, you can say welcome. Uh, so we are appending welcome and the text returned by the get text method of the name text field. Uh, yeah, so if you run this code now, we, we're just going to press shift F6. And it's going to take us, the code is going to run, a window should appear. That window. Oh no, okay. And you type name, so I'm going to type my name and I'm going to press greet me. And that says welcome, Monthan. I'm just gonna go in design view, and I think I should increase the size of this. Uh, and if I run this again, and welcome, Monthan. Okay, so right now, if you type anything, it's just gonna append the text, and that's it. So that's how you basically the uh, the GUI builder works. You drag and drop an object, and you uh, double click it to access its default property. In this case, it's action performed. It's off for the button, which is click. Uh, 
Now we're going to explore a bit more about the other events like the mouse enter and mouse exit. So mouse enter is the event gets triggered as soon as the mouse goes inside the button. I mean as you approach the button to click it. So that's the mouse enter property. Mouse exited is the property when the mouse comes out of the uh, button. So that's mouse exited. So as soon as the, the the mouse comes out of the button, mouse exited even gets triggered and the block inside the mouse exited gets executed. And mouse press, mouse results, I mean, uh, there are a lot of methods. So now we're going to do the mouse entered. You double click on the method name or you click on there and you say green button mouse entered. It's going to take you straight to the method and there you say greeting label dot set text and you put the string in here so mouse entered is going to say this and then go back into design and we are going to change another event which is mouse exited it's going to go here and Okay, so let us run this program and let's see what happens. So as soon as I go in here, you see the text here has been changed. If As soon as I move my mouse inside, it says mouse entered. And as soon as I move my mouse outside, it says mouse exited. So, well, that's how it works for now. And you can, uh, you can what do you call it? You can just go on experimenting with these properties and stuff because properties are really helpful and these events are really helpful in um, monitoring the events that are occurring on that on that particular component or object or control but yeah yeah in this case it's a control and yeah stuff like that so i think we are done with the layouts and controls tutorial it, the next tutorial is would teach you more about the graphical user interface builder and more about the Java graphical user interface, how to take advantage of the uh, and how to use certain aspects of the graphical user interface like lists and drop down lists and stuff like that. It's going to be more about controls and detailed uh, um, things about controls and stuff. So I'll see you in the next tutorial. Till then, enjoy making your graphical user interface interfaces and make your interfaces more innovative and stuff like that. So till then, see ya, good night, bye bye, enjoy.